Hello everybody, this is Jeremy Mateo within the DAW. Welcome back. Today's video is going to be on the brand new Blue Cat Audio Aku Fiend. Now this is a plugin that I demoed out for Blue Cat Audio during NAM, and this is a really cool and powerful plugin designed to generate uh, guitar-like feedback inside of your DAW. Now for those of you who may or may not know, when it comes to generating feedback, uh, for electric guitar, you usually have to stand next to a speaker, which is playing the signal back to you, and that feeds back into the pickups and causes feedback. Or if you're doing it the old fashioned way, you go up to the amp when it's blasting super loud and you cause feedback. Now this is awesome and really cool, but a problem that happens with home studio people or people who use amp sims is that you're not able to do that at least not in any effective manner. You basically have to walk up to a speaker, your studio monitor, and you have all these issues because you're basically standing in a very awkward position. It's not a fun time. That is where Blue Cat Audio created AcuFiend. This is a very simple and easy to use plugin that's designed to create really simple feedback. It essentially generates a sine wave uh, that is triggered by the threshold and its pitch detection section that will follow the root note of what you play. You have a dry and wet control for the output, and dry is just your original dry signal, while wet is the feedback. The harmonic section is choosing what octaves are you going to generate. So you have subharmonics. Notice how that was a subharmonic. It might even have clipped. You have first, second, third, fourth, and fifth order harmonics. And I'm going to be honest with you right now, the best harmonic to use when you want to have a more realistic tone let me just set this to 40%, is the second order harmonics. It's going to sound the most realistic, and let me show you what I mean. That sounded like feedback from a real amp, right? And if I bypass this, you can hear what it sounds like without it. Now that sounds cool, but check it out. Even with it on, Notice how I didn't get any unwanted feedback till the very end, and that's because I have my threshold set to very low. The level below the threshold will actually determine at what point the feedback will stop. So if you have it all the way up, nothing's gonna trigger. All the way down, everything's gonna trigger. Somewhere in the middle is where you wanna be. I like to stick between 75-ish or 71. And then you have your time section, which controls how fast will it go into feedback, and how fast will it go out of feedback. Setting them both to zero is going to be as fast as possible. And you're gonna get a really crazy sound, while setting it to 100% is going to be very long and slow. The best case scenario is to set your feedback output to somewhere in the medium range, so it doesn't decay too unnaturally, but set your feedback fade in to be pretty slow, so it doesn't feed in too fast. Right? Pretty cool. If you set this a little faster though, it can actually follow along with your really heavy gating. Now, the way that we're using this right now is we're actually going into the DI output of my Helix, which has my guitar plugged into it, into my DAW, through AccuFiend, and then through Pipeline, going back into the input of the Helix, and I have it set up to be listening to Loopback 3. So we're actually playing through the Helix using the DAW with AccuFiend before it. Pretty cool. The next section is the attack and pitch section for the sensitivity. Now attack and pitch set to zero is going to be super sensitive essentially, while set it to 100% is going to be less sensitive. And uh, let me show you what I mean. If I have attack at zero and pitch at 100, and then we set the threshold somewhere, maybe right here. Notice how nothing happens. If I set the pitch to somewhere like 50, You'll notice that it does follow the pitch that I'm hitting, but it also cuts out because it stops detecting it. While having it at zero, pretty much all the notes right away. And the attack speed at zero is going to be as fast as possible. I like to have it set to somewhere around here. Because it kind of gives it a more natural feel, right? Pretty cool. 
Moving on, we have the range section, and this is essentially going to control the range of where the harmonics can be generated. Setting this to all the way down is going to be the full spectrum, meaning that you're gonna have super low harmonics that can be generated and super high harmonics that can be generated. Now that sounds really cool, but that also is gonna cause some issues later on down the line, because if you play really high notes on your guitar, a higher octave harmonic is gonna sound really bad. So if you play a really high note, it's best to either not have feedback or have the feedback limited to a certain band. Next is the transposition, which controls intervals. You can have things either an octave up or down and anywhere in between, as well as choose of the scale that you wanna be in. And you can fine tune it by sense right here. Let me show you by minus one octave. And then up one octave. Pretty cool, right? Keep in mind that all of this can be MIDI mapped and can be controlled. If I get my uh, Helix and I add a foot controller, I can technically use that to trigger the bypass and the other controls. Pretty cool, pretty simple. Now, let me show you some basics on how this works. Let's say I bypass this and I just play something. <laughs> It's pretty basic, right? But if I turn it on and we set something like the fade in time and out time like this, set the threshold like here. And keep in mind that this will change depending on the pickups that you have, the guitar that you have. The output of the pickups really is going to have a huge impact. I have passive pickups, so you're gonna notice that on really low notes, it's not really being picked up, especially because uh, it's going to be gated really hard by the Helix's uh, gate that I'm using. Turn the gate off, I'm gonna have a lot of noise, so I don't wanna do that. Besides that, that's pretty much it. It's a really cool and simple plugin, and I highly recommend checking it out. Anyway, this is Jeremy Mateo within the DAW. I will have links in the description below, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.